What's up Guardians? Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. In Season 22, Bungie will be introducing Exotic Mission Rotators, which will be a new gameplay mode that allows Guardians to access different exotic missions like Vox Obscura, the Presage, and Operation Seraph Shield. These returning missions will include several craftable legendary weapons, including the Callus Mini Tool and other seasonal weapons, but there will also be new and returning craftable exotic weapons like the Revision Zero, Dead man's tail and the dead messenger so if you missed out on some of these exotics their missions and other rewards then this is going to be a great opportunity to get those so today we are going over a comprehensive guide on how these exotic mission rotators work how you can unlock and craft all of their armor and weapons and which god rolls you should be crafting once you've gotten their patterns the first thing i want to address is the vex caliber and the wicked implement currently the vex caliber and its associated mission the override node is still accessible through the EDZ director and it will continue to be until the final shape releases and the same goes for the wicked implement at which time these exotics and their missions will be revised and repositioned into the exotic mission rotator lineup. If there are any other exotic missions between now and the end of Lightfall, then those missions and their exotics will also be placed into the exotic mission rotator lineup. Bungie hasn't specifically stated whether this will be the same for the deterministic chaos and its mission, but it is possible that it could also join these other exotics in the future. The first three exotic missions that will be featured throughout Season 22 will be the Presage, Vox Obscura, and Operation Seraph Shield. To access the Presage, you will need to be an owner of Beyond Light, or Season of the Chosen. To access Vox Obscura, you will need to be an owner of the Witch Queen, or Season of the Risen. And to access the Seraph Shield, you'll need the Witch Queen, or Season of the Seraph. When these missions return, they will include new challenges and triumphs. There will be a normal and a legendary version of each mission, and each mission will feature a series of rotating dialogue and narrative. So how can you get and craft these exotics? On your very first completion of any of these missions, you will be rewarded with their associated exotic. And in order to obtain the weapon pattern for that exotic, you'll just need to extract the weapon pattern from the weapon itself or dismantle it. Once you've gotten the weapon pattern, each completion of the associated mission, whether it's on normal or legendary difficulty, will provide an intrinsic upgrade that can be used when crafting the exotic at the Enclave. Each completion of the legendary version will reward a catalyst upgrade for the associated exotic. And don't worry, you don't have to have the exotic equipped to receive the intrinsic or catalyst upgrades. Now let's talk about getting those returning weapons and the armor. The normal and legendary versions of these missions have separate weekly reward lockouts and can be ran on all three characters, so running them on each difficulty with each character will be extremely advantageous towards collecting those weapon patterns quickly. Each legendary weapon pattern requires five deep sight extractions, so you can expect to be revisiting these missions over and over again, which isn't a bad thing at all. These are some incredibly fun missions. On your first weekly completion, of each difficulty, you'll be rewarded with one red border weapon. If you've unlocked all of the weapons and have already obtained all of the armor, then you'll receive a random world drop. Additional completions could potentially reward you with more red border drops, but only the first completion will provide the guaranteed red border. Along with the mission rewards, there are also weekly pinnacle challenges that will reward one guaranteed red border from that specific exotic mission. When the Presage is the featured mission, the Dead Man's Tail will be the exotic reward. Season of the Chosen and Opulent Armor and Weapons will also be rewarded. This includes the Nezarek's Whisper, the Bump in the Night, the Tears of Contrition, Hollow Denial, Fire Fright, Without Remorse, the Ostringer, the Drain, the Beloved, and the Callus Mini Tool SMG. When the Vox Obscura is the featured mission, the Dead Messenger will be the exotic reward. The Dead Messenger will be getting some new weapon traits when Season 22 begins. The weapons and armor from Season of the Risen will also be available. This includes the Tusk Allegiance armor set and the Explosive Personality, the Recurrent Impact, Under Your Skin, Sweet Sorrow, Thoughtless, and the Peace of Mind. 
When the Seraph Shield is the weekly mission, you'll be able to get the Revision Zero, and you'll be able to get the Season of the Seraph Armor and Weapons. This includes the Fire and Forget, the Tripwire Canary, Disparity, Path of Least Resistance, the Judgment of Kelgaroth, and the Retrofit Escapade. Plus, you'll be able to get all four of the Aikilos weapons and the Warmind's Avatar armor set. So we're talking a lot of armor sets and a lot of red border weapons that many Guardians missed out on in the past. So now let's talk about which of these weapons you should be focused towards obtaining and which god rolls you should be crafting first. Starting with the presage weapons. Nezarek's Whisper? A great glaive, yes. But honestly, glaives are in a really bad spot right now. So unless they get a buff, this is a weapon type to steer clear from. So how about the bump of the night? Well, it was an all right rocket launcher until the cold comfort came out. And with so many other top tier rocket launchers in the mix, the bump of the night just lost its flair. The Tears of Contrition remains to be a solid performing kinetic scout rifle. But without kinetic tremors, I don't see much of a reason to switch off of a hung jury or a Randy's throwing knife or a Transfiguration. The Hollow Denial is one of my favorite trace rifles. It's void, it offers Repulsor Brace or Killing Tally, and you can get Lead from Gold, which is absolutely amazing when double special loadouts are just so good right now. Moving on, the Fire Fright. While it's not my favorite kinetic auto rifle, it certainly holds its own, and it's definitely worth getting. The combination of Surrounded and Threat Detector is epic, and if you're like me, you love having Osmosis as an option on your kinetic weapons. And the Fire Fright's got it. The Without Remorse is a pretty decent shotgun, but honestly, the biggest appeal to this weapon is its inclusion of Incandescent. So unless you're just trying to add to your collections, I would pass this one by. The Ostringer, however, is a weapon that you'll want to snag and craft. That is at least if you're looking for a new PvP hand cannon, because the Ostringer can be a beast in the Crucible, with its combinations of Snapshot Sights and Rangefinder or Opening Shot. I still prefer the performance of the Is Luna, but the Ostringer is still a remarkable hand cannon. And just as remarkable, the Drain Sidearm. This thing is super fast, super accurate, and super fun, and it comes with so many great combinations that are perfect for PvE or Crucible, so definitely worth getting. The same can be said for the Beloved. It's an exceptional sniper rifle that offers snapshot sights, along with quick draw or moving target, which is going to work out really well in the Crucible. It does offer boxed breathing or incandescent to give some nice PvE appeal, but honestly, there's better PvE sniper out there. And the best weapon out of this lineup is going to be the Callus Mini Tool. At 900 RPM, this thing shreds. And while you'll find it to be far more suited as a PvE weapon, with options of incandescent, with threat detector, or unrelenting, this can still be a weapon that does some major damage within the Crucible. Now let's move on to the Box Obscura rewards where we have the Explosive Personality. This is currently the only Solar Waveframe Grenade Launcher, and while it's not as flashy as a Forbearance, it can offer some very powerful combinations, which include Disruption Break, which provides a 50% increase to kinetic weapon damage. The Recurrent Impact is a heavy machine gun that will synergize perfectly with Stasis builds, as it offers Headstone in combination with Subsistence. Under Your Skin is a solid performing Void Bow, that can come with Explosive Head and Archer's Tempo, which significantly improves that 680 draw time. The Sweet Sorrow can be a great auto rifle, but it's a tiny fish swimming in a big shark-filled ocean, because there's honestly several other auto rifles that I would turn to before going with a Sweet Sorrow. The Thoughtless is an interesting kinetic sniper. Not the greatest, but certainly not the worst. More suited for PvE, with options like Overflow with Firing Line or Headstone. Up next, the Peace of Mind, a kinetic pulse rifle that packs a wallop at least in the PvE, with Vorpal and Overflow, but it's pretty sluggish, which doesn't bode well for Crucible, especially when there's several far better pulse rifles, like Chattering Bones, for example. And finally, let's turn to the Seraph Station rewards, where we have the Fire and Forget Stasis Linear Fusion Rifle, a three-burst linear, which, oddly enough, offers Headstone in the left column and Chill Clip in the right, 
but sadly, without some of the key weapon traits that are needed for DPS, this weapon falls behind in comparison. Tripwire Canary is a rather ugly yet powerful bow, which comes with the meta role of Archer's Tempo and Explosive Head, but it also offers Dragonfly in the left column and Under Over in the right column, which can be extremely effective against enemy shields. The Disparity is a nice stasis pulse rifle that has some interesting combinations that can be pretty potent within the Crucible, like Desperado and Outlaw, or Heating Up, and it also comes with Gut Shot Straight, Kill Clip, or Headstone. While it's not the best pulse rifle out there, the Disparity definitely holds its ground. Up next, the Path of Least Resistance. This Trace Rifle comes with just about every combination that you could hope for out of a Trace Rifle, except for a trait that overflows the magazine. But with Volt Shot or Dragonfly in the right column, this is an extremely fun and powerful Trace Rifle to have. The Judgment of Kelgaroth is a fantastic glaive, especially with close to melee. But just like Nazarick's Whisper, glaives just aren't in a good spot right now. The Retrofit Escapade, however, continues to be a dominating force. With 4th times the charm and target lock, you can absolutely shred through nearly anything in this game, as long as it's close enough, because the further away your target is, the worse this weapon is. But within mid to close range engagements, there's not many weapons that are going to do better. And we finish off our list of rewards with the Aikilos weapons, and honestly, all four of these weapons are spectacular, at least in the PvE that is. None of these weapons really excel in the Crucible. The best of the bunch would have to be the SMG, because of its inclusion of Volt Shot with Feeding Frenzy, but with its high rate of fire and the addition of 1-2 Punch, the Aikilo Shotgun is an absolute beast. And with that, I believe we have reached an end of today's video on how to unlock and craft all of the returning seasonal weapons and exotic weapons that are featured within the new exotic mission rotators that will be coming out in Season 22. If you have any further questions about accessing these missions and obtaining their rewards, then be sure to let us know down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these new rotating exotic missions, their rewards, and everything else in regards to Season 22. Let me know down in the comments below. Personally, I'm really happy that Bungie is doing this. It's a great way to reintroduce these weapons without having to do sunsetting, and it eliminates the frustration that many players have when they miss out on opportunities of getting certain weapons. So I really think this is a very smart idea by Bungie, and I can't wait to see it implemented, and I can't wait to see how it progresses several seasons down the line. With that being said, I thank you as always for checking out today's video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit the like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.